Okay, starting today, we'll start taking a much closer look at Cycles rendering and also materials and textures to go along with it because Cycles has really upped the ante for Blender and it made it, it's made it a much, much nicer renderer and as such, we have to change the way we look at materials as well. So let's go take a look, for instance, at one of the, just one scene back here from the boat cruising down the coast. Now this is in Blender render mode and in texture mode like I usually like to work so I can put lights in the scene and have it rendered you know like this for me which is is a lot of fun and then to make the buildings come out I have small lights here in the scene that are illuminating up against the side and this is a separate object made of blue but sometimes that well at least now that you know how to get around blender significantly if you followed all my materials you should be quite well grounded in using blender but now we get to do the fun stuff which means making the final rendering and really make the scenes look nice and if I was to even take this basic model and wanted to use a better lighting model even though this lighting model is fun for me because I like sort of this I don't know it's a youthful cartoonish like mo lighting which is fun but the cycles render is really powerful and I'll show you what I mean well, one thing is that notice in here I have the flag texture mapped so in when we work within blender render we come up here to the material tab we set the colors and the shading and the lighting all through here how we want reflectivity transparency all like that and then if we want image maps and things like that we would set them in here in fact that's how I'd set the image map for the flag and here I grabbed an image map through the texture button but I didn't want to spend a whole lot of time on this form of material since cycles is now available and we can do a lot more interesting stuff with it so let's see how easy it really is believe it or not it's really easy you know you we have to use node editor and the node editor is really easy all right and you'll see what I mean so in this particular image all I have is this eight-sided octagon in the scene and I'm in cycles render and I'm down here I'm looking at it in rendered mode so it's rendering in real time according to the preview amount that's set over here within this integrator tab of the render button so at the preview says run through 10 samples each time that I change the scene so if I just come over here and zoom into that scene you'll notice it runs through 10 samples you can see it right up here watch this if I zoom back out Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it does that quality of rendering. If I was to press F12 while I'm in here, if I have that same view, let's see. Well, I have a different camera view, but it's going to go through it 40 times up here on that rendering. All right, I'm going to cancel that and just look at my preview mode for a moment. So this object and this plane are, and the lighting in the scene is completely different than what we would use in Blender Render. So I'm set to Cycles Render. So one thing I'll do, in fa instead of looking at this final rendered mode, I'll look at it in material mode. This is kind of the equivalent of texture mode in here. And this tells me what my object color actually is when I set it for these things. And also way up here in the scene, I'm just, I have two lights, a blue light and a white light at an angle. And this kind of works okay because, you know, if you have maybe a real world lighting scene where you have light coming from throughout the whole sky, well, this kind of is a quick setup to simulate a couple of lights like this but now let's go look in the material tab and see how it looks different than before so the only thing I have set up in here is this diffuse shader in here and this is right in there I just set diffuse shader see it says shader right there so these are shaders for starters alright and this is the color that I've set for that shader and that's for all I've really had to do. And then on, if I right click this, I also have a diffuse shader set for this and I've given it this color in here. So if I was to press F F12, it would render those two colors as you see like that. All right, so, and then you can do, but the way to work really is not to just have this panel open. The way to work is use nodes. Nodes are powerful. They might seem a little uh, difficult at the outset, but they're not they're actually super easy and I'm going to show you how the way to work at least from my perspective is you grab another window right and you always work with a second window while you're doing this kind of work and then you come down here and you grab where is my node editor there's my node editor oh the mighty node editor alright so the plane is selected right here 
I'm going to just zoom in with the wheel mouse. I'm going to center it by holding down the wheel mouse like this. I'll move this over so we can see more of this for now. And I'll go into camera view over here so we see what the camera view is going to look like. And then, well, actually, what we'll do in this case, we'll actually go back to rendered mode. That way we can see in real time what's happening in here compared to what's happening in here. So all this is telling me is this is, these are like little modules. So it's a, here's a, the same diffuse shader that's set up over here. And you take the output and you go into the surface. It's the surface, you know, you've seen that in the other material of Blender Render, whether we're going to do surface rendering or volume rendering. We'll stick with surface rendering for now. And these are connected together by default. So we'll just take a look at that. These colors are connected together. I can come in here and change this color here and make it like this. And notice it automatically changes the color in there and in there. So this is kind of telling you what's happening in here. So what you can, but this is only indicating this one thing. You can kind of replicate this by coming down here. And notice this use nodes I have checked. See that? And we're going to leave that checked like that. And this will tell us all the things that goes on in here at the same time. All right, so instead, maybe I don't want to use a diffuse shader. Maybe I want this to be, I'll just change it. And I'll call, I'll make it glass. All right. And then when I have the glass set here, let's see. Well, this is a pretty poor example of glass here. Let me move this over. It's, oh, that's because I have glass on the surface. All right, never mind that. Let me change that back to the diffuse. I wanted to change the glass on this piece right here. All right, so this has a diffuse shader, but I'll change that glass instead. So I'll change that to glass. And no, notice its nodes are showing this in here. And I, when you bring this window up, maybe I'd already had this set. You want to make sure that you see this here? This is the node tree type, and it says right there, right underneath the shader nodes. So that has to be selected because that's what we're looking at are the shader nodes for starters. And your this button has to be selected here if you want to see it over in here like this. Well, so it instantly has turned it to glass. If I change the color in here to yellow, it instantly turns it to yellow glass. I mean, how easy is that? All right. So now you have this glass shader going into the surface of the object. And it gives you the, the output in real time. All right, we're going to do one more thing in here for, today, for this particular first lesson. We're going to move this up here. And we're going to add another node. And instead of just having a glass node, I'm going to add another shader. And this time I'm going to add a diffuse shader like this. And there it is. There's a diffuse shader like that. All right. So I could cut, I could instead, I could have this set here with red diffuse color. But the only thing that's connected is this yellow to here. So maybe instead, I'm going to hold down the control key. I'm going to just draw right across there. That cuts that out. Then I'm going to grab this. I'm going to connect it to there. And then it instantly draws a diffuse shader for my surface. All right. So practice that. Just practice adding different shaders here because these shaders, most of these here, as you see, velvet, transparent, translucent, glass, diffuse, glossy, etc. Just use those right there. They're the same things that you find all in here, right? And then we'll work with these mix shaders and the add shader here in the next video. Those are really powerful. And that's where the real fun begins. All right. And I'll see you in the next lesson.